Hello everyone, Dr. Polaris here. During the Oligocene, the lineage that led to modern apes diverged from that of the Old World monkeys. These were the hominoids, tailless arboreal animals that first appear in the early Miocene deposits of East Africa. Being relatively small and rather monkey-like when compared to modern apes, these stem hominoids inhabited the tropical forests that were widespread across Africa at this time. As their home continent pushed northwards and collided with Eurasia, hominoids took part in a significant faunal exchange, accompanied by fellow African mammals such as proboscideans and hyracoids. During the early and middle Miocene, Europe's climate was significantly warmer and more humid than in modern times, with the region covered by closed subtropical forests similar to those present in southern China and eastern India. The best North American comparison for this type of environment would be the swamp forests of Florida and Louisiana. These Miocene Eurasian forests were home to a variety of animals, including large proboscideans such as Dinotherium, the hornless rhino Acerotherium, early relatives of pandas such as Kretzoiarctos, and the last archaic saber-toothed Nimravids. Beginning approximately 13 million years ago, hominoids also make their first appearance in the European fossil record, with the subtropical forests there clearly being to their liking. Unfortunately, many of these animals are known from very fragmentary remains, and as such have proven difficult to classify. Indeed, even today, many of these species tend to move around the ape phylogenetic tree quite significantly depending on the study. Perhaps the most famous of these European apes were the Dryopithecines. Although exactly which fossil apes belong to this lineage remains controversial, it is thought that this clade were members of the modern ape family Hominidae, which includes orangutans, gorillas, chimpanzees, and humans. Most studies suggest that Dryopithecines were more derived than orangutans, and they may have been ancestral to Homininae, which includes gorillas, chimps, and humans. The genus Dryopithecus itself was native to France, Spain, and Austria during the Middle Miocene roughly 12 million years ago, inhabiting seasonal subtropical forests. Known from fragmentary jaws and limb bones, Dryopithecus was similar in size to modern bonobos, with the average weight of adult males being an estimated 44 kilograms or 97 pounds. The teeth were structurally similar to those of chimpanzees, which, in combination with the animal's slender jaws, indicate a diet of relatively soft fruits and honey. Dryopithecus possessed facial anatomy similar to those of gorillas, with males being significantly more massive than females. The canines were also larger in males, which in modern primates is correlated with aggression and suggests a social structure comprised of many females and a single dominant male. Dryopithecus family groups would have lived alongside rhinos, the proboscidean Gomphotherium, and the cougar-sized felid Pseudilurus. A close relative of this ape, Rudopithecus, was native to Hungary approximately 10 million years ago. A small chimpanzee-like animal, Rudopithecus possessed a more mobile lumbar region than all modern apes except for humans, which indicates a posture that was at least somewhat bipedal when walking on the ground. Given its small size, Rudopithecus may have walked similarly to modern gibbons, which may suggest that knuckle walking evolved independently in orangutans, gorillas, and chimps. Several other European apes are sometimes included in Dryopithecini, although their position here is far from settled. The genus Hispanopithecus dwelt in Middle Miocene Spain, where it fed on figs, strawberries, and soft young leaves. This genus possessed elongated forelimbs similar to those of gibbons, although it probably moved through the trees in a suspensory manner, gripping branches with its strong elongated digits. A highly arboreal animal, Hispanopithecus also appears to have been sexually dimorphic, with males averaging 40 kilograms or 88 pounds, while females weigh just over half as much. A closely related genus, Pierlopithecus, was native to Spain about 13 million years ago, and has been suggested to be close to the last common ancestor of gorillas, chimps, and humans. In a similar position is Danuvius, a middle Miocene form from Bavaria that would have resembled modern bonobos weighing just 23 kilograms or 55 pounds on average, and was capable of both suspensory tree hanging and bipedal clambering, a combination of features that are not seen in any living hominids. 
If the last common ancestor of gorillas, chimps and humans possessed this kind of locomotion, it would suggest that knuckle walking and the bipedal stride of people evolved from the arboreal clambering of Miocene apes such as Danuvius. However, this matter is still far from settled. Other northern apes were less closely related to modern humans. The Miocene Spanish genus Pliobates, first described in 2015, was a tiny gibbon-like animal known from an adult female specimen that weighed a mere 11 pounds. Slender and lightly built, Pliobates probably fed mostly on fruit and moved through the canopy by swinging below branches. Phylogenetic studies have placed this genus as a hominoid more basal than both gibbons and hominids. This is interesting in that until the discovery of this animal, it was thought that ancestral apes were larger and more robust, with gibbons being unusual outliers. Now, it would appear that all modern apes evolved from relatively small and unspecialised gibbon-like ancestors. One of the older European apes was the genus Gryphopithecus, which was native to Turkey, Austria and Slovakia during the Middle Miocene. About the size of a small chimpanzee, this animal would have more closely resembled tailless macaques in appearance, particularly in terms of its facial structure and locomotion. Its teeth were adapted for eating leaves and fruit, with sexual dimorphism in their form, indicating that Gryphopithecus probably lived in large groups. Phylogenetic studies have recovered this genus as a basal hominoid, similar to early African apes such as Proconsul and Ekembo, which were also rather macaque-like, indicating their fairly recent divergence from the Cercopithecoid Old World monkeys. Similarly, the youngest known Miocene ape from Europe was a basal animal as well, but a far more unusual one. This was Oreopithecus from the late Miocene of Italy, inhabiting what was then a chain of islands in the Proto-Mediterranean Sea approximately 9 to 7 million years ago. Known from a multitude of specimens recovered from fossil sites in Tuscany, this genus is well studied, with its life appearance being known with confidence. Weighing roughly 30 to 35 kilograms, or 66 to 77 pounds, Oreopithecus possessed a relatively short snout, powerful chewing muscles, and comparatively small molar teeth adapted for feeding on a diet of leaves. The canines were not prominent, being the same size as the rest of the dentition, suggesting that this ape probably did not aggressively compete for mates with intermale violence being low. This could indicate a social structure more comparable to that of bonobos than chimps. Oreopithecus dwelt in swampy forested environments and demonstrated adaptations for suspensory locomotion in the trees, with a broad torso and long slender digits. It was initially thought that this animal may have been a habitual biped and a close relative of humans, although this later proved to be false. Oreopithecus was capable of standing bipedally, but in a manner totally different from that of later apes such as Australopithecus. The big toe of the hind feet projected out at a 100 degree angle, enabling this genus to stand up with the foot acting like a tripod. It was, however, unable to walk or run quickly while doing this, and it would not have needed to be, as Oreopithecus lived in an ecosystem that lacked any significant predators. Modern studies have placed the animal as a member of the basal ape family Dendropithecidae, and in particular within the subfamily Neanderpithecinae. These were the most basal of all apes, with Oreopithecus being the only genus to have lived outside Africa. It was also the latest surviving form, dying out 7 million years ago as its island home came into contact with the European mainland, with the introduction of new predators spelling doom for this specialised ape. With the demise of Oreopithecus, apes became extinct in Europe. On the mainland, cooling and drying trends during the late Miocene led to a reduction of the humid subtropical forests that had characterised the region for much of the period. In their place, more open savannah-type environments emerged, which were clearly detrimental to the endemic primates present here. Apes as a whole continued to thrive in Africa and Asia, with the highly successful, hairless and bipedal genus Homo entering the region millions of years later, reintroducing apes to Europe. Thanks for watching everyone. The next episode will cover the Metilurian saber-toothed cats. So until then, I'll see you again soon. Cheerio.